welcome to this tech tip showing how to easily build tool path that keeps the tool down between depth passes and switches the cut direction on each pass. The info in this mini training segment is useful for milling applications and also for turning centers with live tooling capability. The part for the first example is machined in a vertical CNC milling machine. The machining process begins with clamps positioned parallel to the y-axis. Material is removed, intelligently avoiding the fixtures. Then the machining stops, clamps are repositioned, and roughing the remaining material resumes. Once the heavy roughing is complete, the excess material along the front and back of the part will be removed. Currently that material is removed in a single pass but it would be better to get this done in multiple passes. That is where we're at in the current process, where we'll explore how to use EdgeCam's multiple pass capability. The tool path we have on this part is instructed to machine the long edges of the part at 3 eighths of an inch increments. And since there's more material to depth than 3 eighths of an inch, the tool maintains a mill cut direction, lifts up to reposition for the next pass, drops lower, and then the third pass that would be needed to completely mill that edge, and then goes and repeats the same path on the long edge on the other side. This is the directive that we have given to the tool path. Let's go in now and look at how the tool path was constructed. To begin with, we've created the tool path using a profile mill operation. The operations are designed to allow users to input a handful of basic parameters and quickly build toolpath. So with a handful of basic instructions, climb mill, cut right to size, 3 eighths of an inch or 5 eighths of an inch lead, cutting data, and basic depth instructions, the software has quickly built toolpath that results in what we have here on the screen. While that quickly got us rolling, behind the scenes, the profile operation provides access to the profile and cycle. So to put this another way, we have quickly built toolpath with a minimal amount of instructions. And then we're going to go in and edit and refine the toolpath. The profile and cycle gives much more inputs, and we're going to address the three main things that build the toolpath we want. To begin with, we want to set the mill type to be an optimized mill type rather than enforcing climb mill. This will allow the software to switch between climb and conventional milling if that helps make more efficient tool path and keep the tool down, so to speak. We've seen that we have 3 eighths of an inch of cut increment, as noted here. Perfect. And then if we head over to the control tab, the second thing we're going to change is the optimization. Instead of Using the default option provided by the operation, we're going to choose closest next. This instructs the software that when there are multiple regions to be machined, just go find the next one. And when we think about splitting up apart six different machining strokes, the software will find the closest machining stroke to the one it just finished, which is the one below where it was just at. The third thing that we need to do is go to the links page and tell the software about when do things become a long move or the tool has to leave the work piece and re-engage with positioning done at a rapid move generally or a very fast feed rate for reasons of cycle time efficiency versus the moves to stay down and continue working. We're going to change over to a step type short link but for the short link distance we'll change this value. It's 200 thousandths of an inch right now and that would mean that the moves where we intend to drop down 3 eighths of an inch and continue cutting would be viewed as a long repositional move, which forces the tool to come up to the clearance plane. Let's change this to be half an inch. That's simply a value picked out of the air that's equal to or larger than the cut increment value. This is a typical way that the profiling cycle would be configured by most users with prismatic operations. This is what we teach in training classes. And this is how to use that. With those three basic pieces of instruction, when we press OK, the software recalculates the tool path, and the results are motion that now comes in, moves the tool into position, 
Machines will own the part, conventional mill, drops down after the lead off, drops down after the lead off, and continues cutting, and then goes and repeats that same path on the other side. If we go in, let's go to the simulation and stop the simulation at this point here. If we go in and further refine that, we can go change the lead moves since they're off the part anyway, to just come in with a perpendicular move and to only lead in on the long repositional moves where we have come in off material. The short moves in between, we don't need the lead. We can just drop down and continue cutting. Another thing to make the tool path more efficient is to tell the software it does not need to feed down when plunging on that initial approach. With those two more quick adjustments, the profiling cycle is even further refined and now comes in, drops in, and we can see as we hover over the path to make this path even more visible that we have a lead in on the first cut and then from there we're dropping between cuts and then leading off the part and then same thing on the other side. If you have been watching on YouTube, make sure to check out the M2 Technologies Tech Tip on finish milling applications, profiling with zigzag depth control for additional information. The M2 blog site has many tech tips and training segments. Use the search option on the blog page with keywords zigzag depth to locate this tech tip and additional information. Contact us by email or phone if you need additional assistance or have questions on CAM applications.